Jumping into it, man. So last week's Bruce Springsteen made headlines for selling his entire music catalog to Sony Music Entertainment in a reportedly $500 million deal. So the question is, why did he sell his music rights? What are your thoughts? 500 plus. Plus. Million. True. So you got over half a bill. Uh, a lot of people doing this, man. This is a big check. That's uh, This ain't. If you guys have been listening, this one might draw in other people. So in case you're first listening to us, we have mentioned other artists selling off their catalogs. This has been happening a slew this year of mm-hmm. just this is dozens at this point of people selling off their entire catalogs to a bigger player. Uh, this is very similar to when big companies like Amazon or Apple will buy out another company or you see this in food and beverage all the time buy out a smaller company, take out whatever competition that is, which is happening right now. Mm-hmm. Artists just aren't thinking of themselves as the competition to these bigger labels now, but the bigger labels have like just rooms of people sitting around looking at how they can protect their dominance in the industry. Yeah, uh, Just one artist isn't really thinking about that mm-hmm. as much. So that you have to just... The artists are the competition now. Mm-hmm. With Web 3.0, you are literally the competition because you don't need the label. Yeah. So before people could say like, "Oh yeah, and the artists like go do your own thing." Like, yes, that was still possible, but now it is like way more possible than ever because you can you can be an artist that is doing some really cool stuff with like streaming, and you can just sell off your catalog directly to your audience now. Mm-hmm. You don't need any middleman. Right. Like you can just have your own NFTs, mm-hmm. uh, your own social token, and say that I'm going to send 50% of the proceeds of this single or this album to whoever owns this NFT or whoever owns uh, our token at the time of this distribution. Yeah. And those are the people getting paid for it. So those people, and you can add on other benefits. You can add on literally whatever you want. You can say that the, the ticket sales for my next concert, I sold my social token. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can do all the stuff. And therefore, you can get royalties that are not decided by somebody else. Mm-hmm. You get royalties, at least the initial royalty is decided by you. You set the beginning price of your NFT. Right. So that could be like, hundred bucks per mm-hmm. NFT, right? right. Uh, but then the, your secondary sales of 5% or 10%, uh, whatever you want to set that percentage at, you can set it up to like 50 or whatever you want, but mm-hmm. then nobody's going to buy it the right. first time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's say you set it reasonable 5% um, and like you get some really good marketing behind your music. You now have a multiplier on mm-hmm. yourself mm-hmm. to where you're not just relying on the streaming royalties from Spotify or Apple Music or wherever you're playing. You're relying on the multiplying effect of you becoming more popular and the NFTs going up in price, which leads to you, your NFTs being traded more Yeah, because a lot of people, you have to recognize the different types of traders in there. So mm-hmm. they're trying to trade your NFT to just make a quick profit, but you're also making the money from that 5% royalty kickback that you gave yourself. and uh, if you sell them in your own token, then you're getting the kickback of the sales from anybody that sells your token too. Right. So you really don't need anybody, which 100%. is what I've definitely learned over the past year, I'd say. Um, more specifically, that if you know financial markets and um, crypto and what's going on, like if you actually study it and you know it, you really don't need anybody Facts. to like give you a deal or yeah. whatever. Like you, you are the deal. Yeah. You, you, and people, um, like, again, they would say that in years prior, but now is the first time that you that it's come to fruition. Mm-hmm. Um, it, for, for Bruce Springsteen, maybe, I guess he's kind of at a point where the $500 million might be fair for him. Mm-hmm. Like, it might be relatively fair. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it's over half a billion dollars. So... He can do some other stuff with that. He can be safer with that. He doesn't have to take as many risks. He can just buy a bunch of real estate, to be honest with you, yeah. and like just collect those checks, and that's still safer mm-hmm. than crypto and you know all the stuff. But um, 
for artists that are not of this size, no. Like, <laughs> you, you really don't need to sell your rights now. What you need to do is start, not need to do, not financial advice. <laughs> what you possibly may want to do, mm-hmm. um, buy other, like, buy other people's NFTs and tokens. I keep saying that not enough people are doing it. Everybody's going to look back in like a, a year or two. There's virtually no other music channels talking about this. Um, do you, you need to, if you're not going to do it, I don't know of any social token funds. Mm-hmm. Actually, there might be like one or two um, that we might have one soon, mm-hmm. but like put your money with so like ask a bunch of good questions and it might be a good idea to find somebody who's like investing or like putting their money into social tokens and NFTs and like just ask them to teach you or yeah. like pay for their course or if they have a fund put some money in the fund and read their statements yeah. when the statements come back mm-hmm. um like there's a bunch of ways to do this cuz i know not everybody wants to like trade um and like getting in on NFT drops and like all that stuff because it's time consuming. But yeah. uh, as long as you know what's going on, then you can take advantage of the information. Yep. Um, so we talked about, I think we talked about James Brown last week. Um, there's, we'll read off this list just so you guys know that like this is, it's already here, but it's like happening more and more and more. Yeah. Um, Stevie Nicks, Paul Simon, Bob Dylan, Motley Crue, Madonna, Red Chili Peppers, Exchange, all of them exchange a portion of their song rights for a one-off compensation. Uh, that that's a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people. Very. Those are legacy artists with like catalogs, Big catalogs. in there. Yeah. Of like you don't have to worry about them coming out with another song. <laughs> right. That's just like they're gonna get put on this decade playlist. Yeah, and they're just gonna get played. Yep, that's it. So the. The uh, the funds that are buying this, so a lot of times it's not a music label buying them. We've mentioned funds are buying them. So these are investment funds uh, that are going to be turning these into Web 3.0 mm-hmm. projects. Um, Sony Music probably is doing the same thing. Uh, they're not just going to rely on Spotify streaming royalties for <laughs> a half a billion dollar payout, trust yeah. me. <laughs> um, so get yourself in position. That's all we got to say. Yes, indeed.